welcome to another one of our videos. Today I have an interesting one. We're going to start doing some interior stuff on my 2011 Raptor. And the first thing that I'm going to be doing today is replacing the steering wheel. So my truck has about 155,000 miles on it. The steering wheel's getting a little ratty. The red stripe's wearing off. The whole wheel's kind of shiny. It's not falling apart yet, but um, it's getting to the point where I'd, I'd want to replace it. So that's what I'm going to do. I ordered a brand new uh, Raptor specific steering wheel from Ford. These are actually great upgrades for any F-150 because I believe they fit any F-150 this generation, 09 to 14. And they're actually uh, surprisingly easy to install. So what you get when you get this from Ford, and I've already opened this package, um, so I'm reopening it now. What you get is a wheel wrapped in plastic and also with this little cloth protector on it. And that right there is what you get for a brand new steering wheel. So you can see, nice and pretty. The leather's nice and matte and brand new. That steering wheel stripe looks fantastic and perfect, and the whole wheel, as a matter of fact, looks perfect. So, what we're going to go do is hop into the truck here. I will show you kind of what everything's looking like as far as the, uh, the current wheel, and we'll dive into the uh, removal of the, the old wheel, the current wheel, and an installation of this new one. So, see you in the truck in just a second. All right, so we're here inside the truck now, and I've got a view as far back as I can. Unfortunately, I can't get the entire wheel in the picture. But you can see I've got all the wear and tear up here. The wheel itself is not totally torn up, but uh, it's getting a little ratty, a little shiny, and it's, it's to the point where I want to replace it because I'm uh, a little bit of a perfectionist about stuff. So in order to get the wheel off, you need to pull the airbag. And to do that, you've got three holes, one right here, one right here, so on either side, and then one on the bottom kind of directly underneath the airbag. Um, it goes without saying for me, but I want to mention it for everybody uh, watching the video. Make sure you've disconnected your battery for quite a quite a while before you start working on any of your airbag stuff, whether it's over here, any of the pillar ones, the, the driver's side steering wheel one, anything as far as the airbag system goes. You want everything discharged, you don't want an airbag exploding in your face, um, especially with tools in between it and you. So this truck, um, because I've been working on all the cooling system stuff, this is kind of being filmed in, in between all of that if you've been watching the other videos. Um, it's had the battery disconnected for a month or two, something like that. So it's definitely, definitely discharged. So I'm going to go ahead and what I'm going to do is stick an Allen key of some variety. I don't know if I have one that's long enough right here, right this second, but stick an Allen key or something similar in here. And basically what you're going to need to do is push, uh, stick it in the, the hole right there and just push it until you have the side of the airbag pop that you're pushing on. So you're going to um, start on one side, it's going to pop here, on this side it's going to pop kind of up here, and on the bottom it's going to pop out from the bottom. And then once those pop, you're going to have the airbag able to be pulled off. So I'm going to have to do that kind of off camera. Um, I'll see if I can film it without kind of rocking the, the camera all over the place and everything, but see what I can do. If I can't catch it on camera, I'll come back uh, afterwards. All right, so it's about uh, 30 seconds after I finished that last clip. I've already got two of the three points uh, released, and I wanted to show you the third one on camera. I've seen videos online. Um, some of them made it look super hard. In this case, it's super, super easy. All I'm doing, stick an Allen key in there. You hit the bottom right there and you push it. And you can see the airbag almost jumped off right there because I did the other two released. So airbag's loose now. I'm gonna reposition the camera so you can see what I'm doing and show you what we're gonna do with the airbag. All right, so we have the airbag out right here. Um, you can see everything's still connected. And basically what we're gonna to need to do is disconnect all the different connections. So this black one and this gray one, if you look to the side, you can see we have a little tiny tab here and we have a matching one on the exact opposing side and same for the black, although you can't really see that just because of the, the darkness. Although you, maybe you can now the light's adjusted. Um, what we need to do is squeeze in those two tabs and pull off the little blocks. Um, you're gonna pull off the entire gray and yellow portion that you see there as well as the black and yellow portion, all that's gonna come off. This black connector down here, you can see we're just going to have to push to release tab and it's going to pull out and the airbag will be free at that point. We have one more connector after that, but we'll address that once we get these out. I'm going to need both hands to do this though and I really don't have a place to put the camera to film that. So I'm going to go ahead and just come back and, and show you what we're going to do next. Again, we're about 30 seconds later. You can see I have the airbag just sitting on the floor. One thing to mention, the airbag obviously is going to explode out where the emblem is. So if it were to explode right now with it facing up, it's just going to blow up my glove box and Stuff in the inside, sure it'll damage the interior of the truck, but it's not going to launch the metal plate if we had it flipped over the other way, up into the glove box, through the roof of the truck, into my face, whatever, 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 whatever. So um, there's super low risk of that happening here, but 
we're going to lower the risk of any kind of injury or anything even further. Safety first. Um, so you can see now what I was talking about with the little tabs on these connectors. You can see tab here, tab here. You just pinch that in. Same with the black one. This black one right here just has a little tab that you push in on the side. Comes out super easy. And then the last one that we need to pull out is the one actually for the steering wheel controls, which is right here. So that one, I believe, if you look at the, on the top, you can see a tab. I believe we just push that down and kind of pull. Yep. And we have that for you now. Um, this connector right here, it should be on the new air, uh, sorry, on the new steering wheel. I, to be honest, have not inspected the steering wheel that closely to see if it is, but that should be on there. Um, this obviously is harnessed into that, so that's going to um, be part of that, that new wheel as well. These are actually attached to the clock spring, so this connector is plugging into a connector on inside there that is uh, part of the clock spring there. So the last thing we need to do to get the wheel off, we're almost there, is crack loose this T50 Torx bolt here. Now, the Torx spec for it is only like 35 foot-pounds. I can probably break this free by hand, but what I'm going to do is just get an impact in here with a Torx socket and let it rip. Uh, take this thing out real nice and easy. I think there's some Loctite on there. If there is, we'll put new Loctite on there whenever we put the new wheel in. Um, but we'll go ahead and, and knock that out. And once I've got this loosened, I'll show you where we go from there. All right, so I just impacted this guy loose. You can see it free spins, and I should be able to loosen it last little bit, take it out. And I can't tell in here in the dark truck if it's got any Loctite on it. It looks like it might have some goop in there, so... Uh, we'll, we'll see either way. I'll probably put some low strength Loctite on that no matter what, even uh, if we torque it to spec. And you can see this steering wheel, um, unlike a lot of Japanese cars and whatnot, has just a hex. So as long as we have it roughly aligned upwards, which we do, the new wheel is just going to drop into place and the hex is going to line up. You don't have to worry about splines and being uh, one tooth out of, you know, 40, 50, however many teeth off and having to, to play around with getting it back and forth, back and forth. So I kind of like the fact that this is a hex one. Um, at this point, the steering wheel can come off, and you can see it's loose and ready to go. What I don't want to do is uh, take it off and have the clock spring fall out. And if the clock spring falls out, or if the clock spring decides to clock itself one way or another, that's not going to be great. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set the camera up, again, down over here on the center console type of area, and show you the process of pulling it off, just so you can see it. And then before I put anything on, I'm going to, because I'm me and I'm super picky about stuff, I'm going to go ahead and clean off everything kind of in between the wheel and the column. Um, make sure it's all dialed in and we can throw the new wheel on. Now they're set down on the center console. Should be ready to take off the wheel. So all we should have to do is kind of wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And pull it off. Now you can see the clock spring kind of moves around in there. Let me get these guys yanked through. Not super crazily or anything. You can see that clock spring moves around some. So what you want to make sure is that if it's facing upwards right here, just like this, that it continues to face upwards right here, just like this. Um, if it's not, then that, that if it spins one way or the other, that will be a, an issue whenever you go to put the new wheel on. And it, it may fit in place if you put it back in the right spot, but if you don't know if it fell to the left or the right, however it might have fallen, um, you're going to have some, some problems whenever you turn in one direction. It's going to be overclocked in one direction versus the other. So going to go ahead and uh, clean all the in here off off camera because most folks aren't going to care about that and we're going to come back and show the installation of the new wheel string wheel time clock spring cleaned up this whole face area right here cleaned up free of dust beautiful awesome new wheel it's right here in my lap now going to try to figure out there we are there's the connector so all we need to do to get the new wheel on is feed these guys through for the airbag and shove that wheel in place. And right there, we have that guy installed. So that's that's the new wheel installed, basically. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and go through the process of putting the bolt back in, plugging the connectors back in, so on and so forth. Um, if there's anything different, odd, whatever, compared to the... Uh, other wheel. I'll go ahead and come back in the midst of the process. Otherwise, what I'm going to do is finish all of that up and we'll come back once we have the wheel put together. It should be a very simple process. Like I'd said, the only uh, point of information that you should need, um, other than what we've gone through so far, torque spec for the bolt. What I'm going to do 
is 35 foot pounds. That's what I found online uh, is, is what Ford's torque spec is for these. And I'm going to put some low strength purple Loctite on there as well, just to make sure that everything's all, all fine and dandy. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my torque wrench, grab uh, the Loctite, get everything kind of prepped and ready to go. Get that bolt back in and cinch everything down, plug everything in. Should be good to go. I got this guy torqued down. What I did was uh, just hold the steering with my knees as tight as I could. And uh, I, I actually zipped the bolt down with the, my impact to start with. Got it torqued down with the uh, torque wrench, which took a little bit more. And then, because uh, it was kind of an unstable situation trying to torque it and hold it with my knees and everything, um, I, I took the impact and zipped it down. Just, just a tiny, tiny bit of a turn more with the Loctite, with that, with the torque wrench, everything, et cetera, et cetera. Pretty confident that it's torqued down to, to where it should be. One thing I wanted to mention before I go ahead and reassemble everything, I just want to mention wire routing. Um, in kind of critical safety system stuff like this, I always try to make sure that my wire routing and putting something back together is exactly the same as it was coming out from the factory. In this case, this plug should go right there. This connector right here goes over here to the airbag, and these two guys go up here to the airbag. They come out above this, and then this guy kind of just hangs in the middle there. Um, just wanted to make a note of that, so whenever you guys are installing the wheel, you can kind of copy the same wire routing, or copy however yours came from the factory is what my recommendation would be. If yours doesn't match this, but it, it looks legit and looks like it uh, hasn't been tampered with before, I would kind of go that route as opposed to following my instructions verbatim. Um, gonna go ahead and uh, connect the airbag back up and put it back into place, and we'll see how she looks. All right, well, you can see the uh, new wheel. If I back out all the way over here, it's installed, looks nice and pretty. Um, airbag just kind of pops in. You gotta put a little bit of force into it. Pop, pop, pop. But you can see, actuates just fine in all three positions, which are the three pivot points that we removed it from. Um, I've got the whole, all the plastics and everything. Um, I put some 303 aerospace protectant on there, which is a nice plastic UV inhibitor um, that I put all over the, the dash and everything else. Basically all the matte plastics, um, I'm able to put it on and it soaks in and keeps them nice and conditioned. The, the whole leather portion, I'm going to throw some leather conditioner on here in a little bit. Um, but that's it. Pretty simple install. I mean, total, including the video time and everything, I probably spent 30 minutes on this. So super, super easy, as long as nothing's seized or anything. Like I said, I've seen some videos online where it seems like some things are, but in my case, it was zippy quick, easy peasy. Um, one thing I want to mention, for any of you guys with a normal F-150 that might want the nicer Raptor steering wheel, this should fit directly on your vehicle. I'll put the part number in the description for this particular wheel. This wheel is what fits all 2011 through 14 F-150s, uh, and I believe F-150s and Raptors. As long as you've got the sync buttons and the, the four button here and then the two down here, um, it should work for you. Now, the 09s and 10s, including the 2010 Raptors, they had this or similar on the right hand side but on the left hand side they had one two three four buttons instead of having the multi-directional thing here with the okay um the 11 through 14 wheels won't work uh directly with them i think you have to swap out these little side panel guys from your old wheel um, i believe the the wheel itself will work and you can fit and convert it basically but just know that it's not plug and play for 09 and 10 f-150s or raptors to, to use this exact wheel that's gonna be in the description i think that older wheel is discontinued now as well so for what it's worth probably make it something happen but just keep that in mind um, but if you have a normal f-150 if you have this control setup you're going to be good to go to put the raptor wheel on and actually the stitching on this compared to my old one is a lot better for the stripe and everything so i'm hoping that wears better it's actually even better than my 2014 raptor that i also have so uh, they made some improvements over the years which is kind of nice but overall Super nice refresh for the interior. For the thing that you use every day whenever you drive this thing, or every time that you drive uh, your truck at least, to have something just nice and fresh that you can put your hands on is super, super nice. For the 300 bucks and change, to me, totally worth it. With that, I wanna thank you all for watching. Let me know down in the comment section below if you have any questions for me as far as any of this stuff goes, or any other Raptor-related, YouTube-related, car-related, whatever questions. Um, and hope you enjoyed the video. Take care.